Welcome to the Steroids Podcast with your host, Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. The Steroids Podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Guide to Roids, 109 page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. Now, for the first time in bodybuilding history, you have someone with no corporate interests and no obligation to please anyone, not walking on eggshells to not offend. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the information, the whole information. The whole truth, not a full truth and a half truth, full truth. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the keys to the Lamborghini, gives you the information, and lets you decide what to do with it. It's a crime this information has been suppressed this long. Now let's get on with the podcast. Okay, welcome to the Steroids Podcast. So today I had a great chest workout. I was at the gym and I was incline pressing the 130s. And now my chest feels great. And you guys know that it's always really important and that this is what the most successful bodybuilders do is a slow negative where you can stop the weight at any time if you wanted to. That's the speed that you should be doing the negative on the way down. And then you push as hard as you can and you push that weight up as fast as you can get back, get it up. Okay? That's how Arnold trained. Okay? And that's... That's what's up as far as rep cadence goes, you guys, you listeners, you good listeners of the Steroids Podcast. You guys are who I'm talking to right now. And that's the way that Arnold trained, okay? He would do a slow negative. He would do the same thing on his rows. He would do a slow negative where he'd slowly let it back up. And then he'd wham, pull that shit back down as fast as he possibly could, okay? Because that's what it takes. That's what real world action is like. You don't move things that are heavy slowly forwards. You push it as hard as you can. So that's what you do. You control it. You're lifting weights. You're not doing movements. You're a bodybuilder. You're lifting weights. So you're putting that tension on your muscles. And then you're stretching that chest out slowly on the way down. Stretching it, stretching it more. Under complete control. Can stop it any time if you wanted. And then boom. Boom. You make that go shooting up as fast and as hard as you can. That's what's up with the rep cadences. Now, before we get on with the first question today, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is why it feels good to be honest about your steroid use, okay? And what I think about fake natties. Okay, so there's one reason to be dishonest about your steroid use that is a good reason, okay? And that is... Because you're afraid of the legal repercussions of um, people knowing you're on steroids. Obviously, if you're doing something that's illegal and you're worried about getting in trouble for it, that's a very valid reason and absolutely something that you know you should do if, that, if you care about that because it's none of their business, okay? It's only your business if you want it to be, okay? So you're under no obligation to tell anybody. But I'm going to tell you guys now why it feels good, why it feels good to be honest about it, okay? Because back when I was first using steroids and I was first starting to get, you know, big, like, you know, people, usually you don't see people that are real muscular, you know? where they just jump out or you're like, whoa, that guy's really muscular. So when people would see me, uh, they, they would ask me tips sometimes. They'd say like, you know, nothing I'm doing is working. And they'd say something like, what do you do, man? Like, like, how can I get like that? And I remember this one bag boy at this grocery store I was at. And he asked me that he was like, he's probably a few years younger than me. He was a black dude, and he was, like, a little bit, uh, like, chunky. And you could tell he, he, he had to be a high school football player, something like that. And he had this, like, he asked me so sincerely, man. He was bagging my groceries, and he had a big smile on, my, on his face. And he was like, he was like, man, I want to get like that, man. What are you doing? Can, 
what what are you doing help me help me out man i'm trying to get just like that and and uh i was like uh watch your training and your diet for a lot of years man just like you know you really got to pay attention and like keep on doing it for years man and if you're consistent you know eventually you'll get there and he's like okay and uh i walked out of there and i felt rotten okay i felt rotten i felt rotten i didn't feel good inside because I genuinely, if somebody is genuinely asking me a question and they're admiring what I do, then I want to be honest to them and tell them the answer. Like, that's a good compliment. And so when I respond to that in a way that is like not the truth and I know it, um, it doesn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel good. And that's how I felt in general. Okay, and then when I started being completely open with my steroid use, and, you know, here's an example of after I was open with my steroid use. Uh, I was coming out of a parking garage in L.A., um, and this guy, this Mexican dude, he's the parking attendant, he, he runs up to me after I, I go in, I go in, I drive in, to the parking garage and then he runs up to me and he says hey man i just have to ask you a question and, and i'm getting out of my car and i'm, I'm going it's after i parked in the parking garage and i'm like okay yeah and he goes what's the secret man how do you get so big man how do you get so big what's the secret and i looked at him and i said three things diet training and steroids and he looked at me like he saw a ghost. And it was, he like, his head like whipped around a couple times and then he went, but they're expensive, right? <laughs> In this high pitched dance voice. And I was like, yeah. And I just walked off, man. And I swear, I was chuckling to myself about that for, for a long time. I was chuckling to myself about that because it, it reminded me like, uh, how just how powerful of a difference that was you know and how free that felt uh just just saying that and i didn't even think twice about it you know like like i noticed it after i walked off then i noticed like oh my god like he really was not expecting that uh and that that was like probably like a once in a lifetime experience for him like you know going and making that effort to go talk to some someone who has something or has done something that he's interested in doing and then for them to just like totally tell you like that, especially if it's like building muscle and stuff like that, to just frankly tell you, yeah, this is what it takes. And basically tell him, you know, all three things that he needs in order to, to do that. Like, like, you know, he probably isn't going to, he probably would have never had that experience in his life because I doubt anyone else is going to tell him like that. And then if he doesn't know anyone, right? So it could have changed the guy's life could have changed the guy's life and uh you know so it was good for him you know he was met with an honest answer and it helps shape his perspective of you know what is reality and what is not helps solve the problem of fake natties a little bit and you know it made me feel great giving someone honest information and helping somebody out you know someone admiring what i'm doing asking me sincere genuine questions and me being able to be i'm a nice guy right I want to help people out. I don't, I, so, so if he asks me and he's sincere, then yeah, I want to tell the honest answer. So it feels very free to be able to do that. That's a reason why, okay? And what do I think about fake natties? I think that your average fake natty, you know, it's none of anybody's business. But I think that the guys that get online and then they're projecting themselves or, you know, like, like Ty Bo is a good example. Remember that kickboxer guy in Ty Bo that was on like Hella Trend? And, uh, <laughs> and and it was like, oh shit! If I do Tai Bo, I can get looking like him. Uh, yeah, that was a total scam. Okay, I don't I don't like that kind of thing. Or like fake natties on YouTube who are like clearly on steroids, like guys like uh, Jeff Nippard, and guys like uh, that guy who does the shirtless the shirtless prank videos. 
uh, Connor, Connor Murphy, okay, or, or even like Cassidy Campbell. If you, if you guys follow my Bodybuilder in Thailand YouTube channel back in the day before I got censored for talking about PEDs, uh, you know what? Uh, I was saying way back in the day that Cassidy Campbell was on steroids and everybody was like, yeah, right. You're insane. You're insane. <laughs> He's not big enough to be on steroids. And then later, you know, it came out that he was on gear. So it just, I was like, I was shaking my head. I was like, yep. Yep. And no, I don't, I don't like that kind of thing. I, I, li I like, I like Cassidy Campbell. I think his videos are funny. He's a prankster on YouTube used to be called train to look good naked on youtube uh but uh he's doing different pranks now not so much fitness so like the guy but uh and he's not a bad example of a fake natty a guy, bad examples of fake natties would be like guys like athlean x or jeff nippard who are like intentionally or matt ogus who are like intentionally using uh their, their entire premise of, of why they're on YouTube, you know, why they're public figures is based on a lie. Like, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Okay? It's disgusting. All right. So that's what I think of fake natties. On with the first question of the podcast. What do you guys say? We get to some questions now. Marco asks, Hey, one thing. Is there really nothing comparable to Tren in the book Ultimate Guide to Roids by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand? You write, Tren is the strongest. Yeah, let me flesh that answer out for you a little bit. It's definitely fleshed out in Ultimate Guide to Roids very clearly, but I like to, when you guys, especially you guys who are readers of the book, my book, Ultimate Guide to Roids. It's the greatest book on truth and honesty and accuracy on how to look like the bodybuilder that you want to look like that has ever existed in the history of bodybuilding, okay? Your goal, what you want to look like, it's stated how to get there in that book. And it's honest and it's accurate and it gives the full truth, not bits of the truth. It doesn't give bits of the truth and bits of, you know, bullshit. It says exactly, it's a roadmap to where you want to go, okay? And that goes for any level of bodybuilding, you know, up to IFBB Pro, Mr. Olympia. There's a roadmap in Ultimate Guide to Roids that will be what's necessary to get you there. So, uh, you know, I talked about that nothing is comparable to, to Trenbolone, injectable Trenbolone in Ultimate Guide to Roids. And that's because here, if nothing matters to you in life other than bodybuilding, if that's the only thing that matters to you in life, then Trenbolone will be the most powerful chemical in your arsenal that can do the most for making bodybuilding happen for you. It will be the most valuable tool in your tool chest that you can use to help you become a bodybuilder. Okay? Just point blank. In what it can do to your body, the amount that you can take, the length that you can take it, the amount and length that you can take it without getting sick, um, it, the, the overall muscle building, gym enhancing, nutrient partitioning, food making it go where you want to go, where you want to make it go in the body, going to the, all the food and the nutrients going to all the right cells and staying out of all the wrong cells. This is what Trenbolone does. If you could pick any substance on planet Earth and be able to take that, like I said, for a long time without stopping, you know, your total, your most valuable tool if you want to become a bodybuilder because it doesn't take a month to become a bodybuilder. It takes years. So if you, your most valuable tool if you want to become a bodybuilder is Trenbolone. Okay? But there's one thing attached to that if you don't care about anything else in your life because it will basically mess up every other thing in your life okay so there are guys out there who they live for the gym and they really do mean that like some of them like don't have families or some of them are like middle-aged and like divorced or they're you know there's a bunch of different reasons there's a bunch of different reasons okay 
but it's usually not guys who are the happiest campers, okay? The guys who don't care about anything but bodybuilding. Like that, becoming a bodybuilder at all costs, really with disregard to anything else in their life, that's the only thing they care about, literally, only thing. Then, yeah, these guys, you know, they're regularly using, you know, all the time, you know, at least 700 milligrams of Trembolone per week. At least. But most of them, since that's their goal, they know that if you take more than that, it works better. So most of them are really taking more like somewhere between like 1,400 to 2,100 milligrams. That's like two cc's or three cc's, you know, at a very minimum one cc of trend every day. But like there's absolutely guys that take three cc's of trend every day. And, you know, like, like this is what I'm talking to you about, though, like the type of person who does this kind of thing. Like, they're sacrificing because, you know, if you want to hear more about the side effects of Trenbolone, then go, I read a part of the Trenbolone section from Ultimate Guide to Roids. I read it on YouTube, okay? There's a YouTube channel on my YouTube channel, Bodybuilding Knowledge Bro, okay? There's a video called Trenbolone, and uh, I tell you about all the trend side effects. So if you want to go over that and you need to know about that and why it's going to, you know, wreck basically like every part of your life except for bodybuilding, then go watch that. But uh, for right now, you're just going to have to trust me. And so for one thing, though, if you're taking like, you know, grams of trend or, you know, like basically this effect kind of starts at around 700 milligrams and then like increases as you get over above that for the for the average user. And that's that your dick just like stops working and it doesn't even really matter like if you use cabergolin or not. And mind you, I'm talking about properly dose tremble on here, okay? I'm not talking about some watered down shit. I'm talking about accurately dosed, okay? 100 milligrams per milliliter. And there is at least 99 milligrams in that milliliter, okay? <laughs> uh, this is the kind of tremble on that I'm talking about, okay? So you guys that are like, no, I don't experience those effects. Well, you know, I would uh, check the potency of your gear. So... It starts that effect where it's like it doesn't matter if you take cover or not like you just can't get an erection okay that effect kind of like starts around 700 milligrams per week you'll notice on only 350 milligrams per week that your dick is just a little bit smaller okay when it's hard it, it's like you'll just look at it and it won't be like a huge difference it'll just be a small difference and you look at it and you'll be like what the fuck and you'll be like why is my dick smaller or like, why is my dick a little bit smaller? Like, what the fuck? And then when you finish the Trembolone, after like three, four, five, six weeks, goes back to normal size. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not pulling your leg right now, okay? I'm not pulling your leg. Also, Trembolone shrinks your testicles more than any other drug, okay? When you are on Trembolone, your testicles are like 40 to 50 percent their natural size, okay? So. Yes, they can go back afterwards, but, like, this stuff shuts you down hard. Like, it, and, you know, you can take it in long dosages for long amounts of time, though, because it doesn't, like, stress your digestive organs. Like, it does raise your blood pressure, but it doesn't stress your liver. It puts a little stress on your kidneys, but it's not severe. And uh, it's not like an oral, so you don't get sick on it. And you can take it for long periods of time on end without having ever having to stop you know i don't use trend anymore but back when i did i've used it for four months non-stop before because i was just like this is the shit and then when you come off you crash you actually crash you're like damn i feel like shit even if you're on other steroids okay even if you're on other steroids you still crash when you come off the trend and it's like it, it's very noticeable in in your head, in your mind, in your day-to-day -day life, in what you're doing. It's right in front of your eyes, okay? So, it uh, it's not a good drug. <laughs> but, but there is nothing that compare can compare to it. If you're uh, if your only goal and nothing else matters to you is getting as huge and freaky as mu and muscular as possible, then it will be the most valuable tool that you could possibly have on planet Earth 
in your tool chest to get you to that goal. But there are other ways to get to your goal. It just won't be as effective and it just won't be as fast and it just won't be as direct. Ha ha. All right. So next question. That was a very good question, Marco. Next question is Joe asks, Dan, the podcast kicks ass. Here's my question. When sex drive takes a hit while on test and D-ball, can Viagra help with an erection? Also, why is it that sex drive takes a nosedive even when estrogen is in range? Probably individual, but was leaning more towards an erection fix with Viagra or Cialis or maybe a combination of both. Yeah, uh, this is a good question that you bring up, Joe, uh, because he said that he's having sex drive issues on a testosterone and D-ball cycle with his estrogen in range. So this is not uh, like he's some kind of whoa, way out there, weird case, okay? I would say most guys are not going to be getting issues, okay? But as many as like, if you're taking this, you know, for a whole cycle and he's like middle of his cycle or something, then, you know, two or three guys out of 20 guys might experience something like this, okay? Or if you take um, gear for a long time, at some point, you're going to experience something like this. Everyone does. Okay? And then you're like, well, what do I do now? And you're stuck troubleshooting. So that's the book, Ultimate Guide to Roids. That's one of the best things that it is for, is that when you get stuck in these situations, you have a 100% guide that can tell you how to get out of that situation that you can trust 100%. And it's not going to lead you astray. It's going to tell you what the best solution is to do for when you have problems and you don't know what to do and you need sh troubleshooting with your gear usage. Ultimate Guide to Roids has got that information in there. No matter what it is, and it will have you covered. And if not, you can come to me, but there won't be it if not. Uh, so what happens is uh, sometimes the pro-hormones that are made when your hypothalamus, remember it releases the gonadotrophin releasing hormone, which then st stimulates the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, which then goes down to your testicles and makes them produce testosterone and sperm. Okay, that's how you, that's called your hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis, and that's how your body regulates your sperm and testosterone production. It's also the way that women's uh, periods and their estrogen are regulated okay same mechanism but with their ovaries okay so in that process of getting there to the testosterone and the dihydrotestosterone being made from the testicles and enzymes uh there's pro hormones made and dif those different signaling molecules on the road there okay and then there's other me there's metabolites of some of those signaling molecules so if you take steroids and you turn that process off, you turn off some of those pro-hormones that aren't then getting uh, produced in your body anymore, but you still have the principal hormones, right? And you have elevated levels of the principal hormones, of the principal sex hormones, okay? So things like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, you have super levels. So even though you're lacking some of those pro-hormones that are not as strong and they're not as important components... Uh, as sex hormones and for like regulating sexual function and things like that um, it still uh, it still matters uh, but most people don't notice it because it's covered up by having those super physiologicals of the primary sex hormones the super physiological meaning very high levels of the primary sex hormones testosterone and dihydrotestosterone so when you uh, some people are more sensitive or sometime, you know, in your steroid using career, there may be some point when you have a problem and you don't know why, because like this guy said, he's on test and D-ball, his estrogen is in range. Why is he having a problem with his sex drive? And so when you start experimenting with PCT drugs, that's why your answer comes. Okay. That's where your answer will come from. Clomid works. Okay. But Clomid's not fun to take. It just makes you feel off. It just makes you feel weird and off so never want to take clomid if i don't have to it's a pain in the ass but it will work uh because it works directly on the first link in that chain the hypothalamus it stimulates receptors 
estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus and makes your hypothalamus then think that there's a, a certain amount of hormones in your blood and then it starts releasing the gonadotropin releasing hormone and that starts the, the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. Okay? That starts that process going. So that's how Clomid works and like 25 milligrams per day can get that process kick-started. But the stronger way to do it is to take HCG because usually it's some kind of pro-hormone that is made in th the testicles or some kind of other androgen that is made in the testicles, you know, a secondary uh, androgen, a secondary sex steroid. It's not the primary ones, the testosterone, the hydrotestosterone, it's a different hormone. Um, and, and there's little bits of other conversions happening and other hormones getting made in there, pro-hormones uh, down there in the testicles. So if your testicles aren't functioning anymore, um, well, then those aren't getting made. You're just injecting the testosterone and then having the 5-alpha uh, reductase enzyme that resi resides in your blood and the aromatase enzyme turn some of that testosterone into estrogen and turn some of that testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. But you're not getting there. There's a ton of them. Okay, I can't name them all because there's like there's like ten hormones that are all these little male androgen pro hormone hormones that are made in the testicles. So when you take HCG, that usually always solves this problem where you're like, okay, my estrogen is in range. I'm not using any weird compounds. I'm using testin D ball. Why is my sex drive low and why isn't my dick working? Okay, usually the problem will be and the way to correct it will be just taking. A thousand I use of HCG twice per week and uh, usually it will go away the problem will go away within like five days um, and you can just take the HCG for a while and then you know usually you'll you, you can just stop when you cruise or something and if that's not something you usually deal with every cycle then it will just kind of go away and it's sort of like a fluke thing that you kind of get rid of with the HCG but for some guys who are really sensitive, it might be something where they need to do that, you know, during cycle or else they have problems. So that's one reason it can happen, okay? And the other reason it can happen, why you can be having these sex drive issues and how you can do the troubleshooting, is it can happen because of high prolactin. So having steroids in your blood, um, it, it decreases your, your thyroid hormone levels. When you have those high, uh, high testosterone levels, your thyroid doesn't uh, function uh, quite as efficiently. And when the thyroid is depressed, uh, the, the alternating hormone in there is prolactin, okay? So as thyroid hormone is suppressed, prolactin raises and increases. And this is like a very, this is not a huge significant amount, but it is something that is happening, okay? It's something that's going on in your body to some degree. Um, but then again, a lot of people don't get this effect or they might get it sometime during their gear using career. This is like advanced stuff that you don't really hear often because you have to really know people who have used this stuff for years and known other people who have used this stuff for years, okay? This kind of information only comes from like experience and years knowing people who have experience so um it could be this prolactin issue okay and how you solve that is you've either got to get you've either got to get cabergoline or pramipexil okay and cabergoline you can take that at half a milligram or even only a quarter milligram um two two or three times a week two or three times a week and see if that makes it go away. And, you know, if you're having a problem with sex drive on d ball and testosterone and your estrogen is in range, then I can almost guarantee you that doing one of these two options, either taking anti-prolactin, cabergoline, or premipexil, or taking the HCG, or taking the Clomid, I can almost guarantee you, like, gar like really close, man, I'm really close. I could almost, like... You know, I'm, I'm like at least, I'm only like three milliliters away, millimeters away, very close to being able to guarantee you within three milliliters that one of those answers will solve your problems. So, yeah, uh, good thing you asked here because it's hard information to find. Other thing 
was that this was uh, somebody else asked me recently, can vitamin B6 really reduce prolactin? Because it's been showed, shown in studies that it does. And the answer is no, not in a way that can be used for bodybuilding. So I've experimented with this. So B6, vitamin B6, for one thing, is toxic in high doses. But I went away and experimented anyways. And when I was using Trenbolone, I used high dosages of vitamin B6. It was at least... It was at least 600 milligrams per day I was using, and it didn't do shit. It didn't do shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to say that it did, because wouldn't that be nice to be able to take some B6 instead of uh, some dopamine agonist anti-prolactin drugs to deal with the, uh, with the trend, with the trend sexual side effects? Or the high prolactin side effects. Wouldn't it be nice if B6 could do it? Wouldn't it be nice? But the answer is no. Not in the real world. It may say that in studies, but in the real world, it doesn't do shit. All right. Peter asks, any way to imitate the trend look without using trend? Is this the trend episode or what? This is like almost... The Ultimate Guide to Trent. But and the bodybuilder from Thailand. Uh, you know, there is a way to imitate the trend look. Um, there's the some pictures of me. There's also uh, on Instagram. And they're also in the last page of Ultimate Guide to Roids, my book. And uh, they're pictures of me looking like I'm on trend. Like people would swear, you're on trend. But I'm not, okay? I'm doing like a, a most muscular, uh, most muscular with like veins and striations and shit like all over the place. And it just looks obscene. It's a completely saturated pose. There's no empty space. You can't see anything but muscle except for outside my body. So how do I look like that without using trend? Okay, the most important component, primo bolin. Primo bolin gives such a sick look it's such a sick hormone it is awesome and it has no side effects okay and it has it has a way better effect than mastron because mastron makes you look like kind of flat and more like a sleek slim athlete but prima bullen doesn't do that but it still gives your skin kind of that same shiny look to it with a little bit of oil on it uh, like that kind of thickish oil that gets on your skin. And then um, the other thing is that uh, it it gives a really sort of boxy shape. But it's, you know, Trembolone gives the muscles kind of a boxy or squarish shape. Um, and Primo Bolin does that too. It, it kind of like imitates it, but it doesn't do it quite the same. Okay, that's the best you can say is that Primo Bolin imitates it, but doesn't do it quite the same. And then, okay, so that's, that's the number one component. Then, of course, you have to use a good amount of testosterone so that you're, like, very, very full, okay? So I'm talking, like, 700 milligrams of Primo Bull in here at least, 700 to 1,000, okay? And then that's, like, kind of the top-off dose for Primo Bull because if you, you keep on increasing the dosage after that, it doesn't really do much. It does a little bit, but the gains are exponentially not good, not better as you increase the dose of taking up to 1.4 grams of Primo Bull per week. Um... Uh, 1,000 is the best dosage. So once you got the Primo Bullion in there, you got it 700 to 1,000, you got to put the testosterone at the same dose, okay? Because then you're going to be full as fuck, which is one of the a attributes of trend. Full, really dense, hard-looking muscles, okay? So if you got a lot of internal pressure, which the testosterone gives, it gives an internal pressure to those muscles, pushing out, bursting out, okay? When you combine it then with the look of the Primo Bullion, because the look of the Primo Bullion is like an imitation trend, Okay, when it's been pushed out and made full like that. Okay, and now here is the second most important part. Okay, this is the next, uh, the next most important part. The answer is super draw. Okay, super draw has it. It comes from Masteron. Okay, if you take the chemical Masteron and you make this alteration to it, remember we talked about the reason why oral steroids stress the liver is because there's this change on the chemical that makes it be able to get through the liver, okay? And it's called a 17 alpha alkylation. So for example, baldanon or equipoids, if you add the 17 alpha alkylation to that molecule, you get dianabol, okay? 
Masteron, Drostanolone, when you add the 17 alpha alpha calculation to make it be able to survive the liver, then it becomes super draw, okay? So this stuff, this super draw, it has a super hardening effect. And it's more of a freaky effect because it also has an insane glycogen loading ability where it can, it's even better than Anadrol at this, where, where it has this simultaneous hardening effect. Uh, and then, and, and like uh, sucking the skin in around the texture and the uh, separation of the muscle where one muscle starts, stops, the next muscle starts, uh, sucking it around those areas specifically. And I guess burning fat in those areas specifically because uh, it makes them show up more visibly. And so that's the hardening effect that I'm talking about. And then uh, it also fills up glycogen like no other drug. No other drug can fill up glycogen the way that Superdrug can. None. The way that it can pack. The only, the only drug that really could compare to its effect in the way to like blow up your muscle from within, from within, is like insulin, testosterone, and trenbolone, and dianabol probably. There's probably no other drugs that could be in the same ballpark or league as Superdrol in its ability to make you change the way your body looks in two to three days after you start taking the tablets. Make big changes to the way your body looks two to three days after you start taking the tablets because it fills the muscles out from within to such an extreme degree. So this is, you know, and it does that at the same time as making etching out those areas where the separation is, where one muscle stops, the next muscle starts, okay? So, and then the other thing is that if you want to look th freaky and boxy in 3D, well, human growth hormone is uh, going to be something that is really going to help you with that goal. And it definitely has cosmetic effects where it specifically, upon injecting the growth hormone and waiting, again, like three, four, five days for that cosmetic effect to come on, you start to notice this effect, this more boxiness, this more where one muscle starts the next the other muscle stopped and when one muscle stops the next muscle starts this look and then that that boxiness where it's like muscles are defying gravity you know they're they're 3d they're sticking out at angles and stuff like that like they seem to have they they have this uh it looks like they have a mind of their own or something you know they're not they're not obeying the way that gravity would think that it would be they kind of stick out and it's like how is that muscle just sticking out there like at angles and shit that's growth hormone <laughs> So, so if you notice, though, every quality of these different drugs is trend has all these qualities. And so that's the thing. And that's the reason why people get so seduced by trend is that trend has all these qualities and it's relatively cheap in comparison to all this other stuff. And you have to take all this other shit in order to approximate its look. So but it makes so many side effects and screws up your life. And anybody who says it doesn't is in denial. <laughs> so like... That's the reason why. That's the reason why it's like a seductive drug and like bodybuilders get addicted to it and, and they really are like addicted to it. You know, they know they shouldn't be doing it and it's bad for them and it's like screwing up their lives, but they, they keep on doing it like in high dosages. So, so these are some of the reasons that I'm telling you about why this happens and, and are the reasons why I decided a couple of years ago, like I'm done with this. I don't want this in my life anymore. And I've had other friends who are experienced bodybuilders. You know, a lot of guys get to that same place get to that same place they experiment with it and then you're like hey this stuff's no good so you throw it out um but yeah so if we're gonna go to a cycle a cycle now i'll tell you what my cycle is in those most muscular pictures okay here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make the thumbnail um yeah i think Okay, scratch that. I'm not going to make the thumbnail. I was going to say I was going to make the thumbnail of the picture. Just look for the freaky pictures of me doing the most muscular, okay? It's all over the place. It's all over the place on my Instagram or something. All right, so what I'm on in that cycle is 1,000 milligrams, possibly more, possibly 1.25 milligrams, actually. Or, sorry, 1.25 grams, so 1,250 milligrams. Testosterone, ananthe, testoviron, bear, pharmaceuticals. Okay, 1,000 milligrams primobolin. Okay, 
This is per week. Okay. 50 to 100 milligrams Anadrol per day. 20 to 30 milligrams Superdrol per day. 1,000 milligrams Metformin per day. Okay? That's what I was on in those pictures. That was my uh, cycle. Oh, and I almost forgot another nice ingredient that was in there. Windstraw, 50 milligrams per day. All right, I'm 100% positive that that was the exact thing that I was on. But I got to add in this too. Nordytropin growth hormone, three IUs injected once per day in the morning. And what was I eating? Every day I was eating the same thing. I woke up. I ate chocolate protein oatmeal. The Quaker Oat chocolate oatmeal packets. And I would mix it with two scoops of whey protein. Then I would eat one whole chicken later for lunch. Then I would go to the gym. I would drink two Gatorades pre-workout two two 32 ounce Gatorades and I would eat two packages of gummies fruit snacks and I was on metformin and growth hormone okay no insulin though no insulin and but metformin is really good at 2,000 milligrams per day it has an insulin like effect and then I would train and then when I get done with the gym the first thing that I would do would be have two more packs of gummies, okay? That's the first thing I would do the second I was finished. Then I would go to the food court that was outside the Gold's Gym in Cebu, Philippines that I was at. And I would go drink the inside of one whole coconut. And then I would eat one whole chicken again. And I would eat three cups of rice okay and then before bed I would have two more scoops of whey protein and I'd have two more packets of chocolate oatmeal okay <laughs> that was my diet and that was my drugs okay that's how that's the exact method that I used just now that I told you about that was the exact method that I used to produce that physique so um, if you notice a trend there, it's pretty low fat and it's pretty high carb. And there's a lot of sugar right around the exercise time, okay? That's how you get big, full, and freaky and have your muscles take up huge amounts of muscle glycogen where it looks like they're bursting from the inside. It looks like they're bursting from the inside out, like your muscles are going to explode, okay? It's, it's low fat, it's high carb, and it's, it's high like, it, you know, like, yeah, a lot of chicken, you know, you got to eat a lot of meat. I ate two chickens a day, and then I was having, you know, like four scoops of whey protein per day as well. So, you know, yeah, it's a good amount of protein. It's a ton of carbs. It was, you know, a bunch of that sugar right around the workouts, centered right around the workouts. And then, you know, a bunch of starch carbs like uh, oatmeal and oatmeal and rice so that's the the truth about that guys is like pre and post workout window when you're on gear matters okay it freaking matters so a lot of guys they notice that it doesn't really make a difference when they're natural and so they're like oh okay well like if you if you don't take that if you don't take that uh you know if you just eat sometime within three hours it's fine or something like that but that's not the case when you're on gear it's like uh very paramount that you be eating you know before and you're going in there fueled and then when you get out it's like you eat immediately like that is what you do <laughs> like that will make a huge difference man and the magic thing with that too is especially post-workout out of all times is when you get done with that workout having starchy carbs or sugar like sugar is much more powerful actually than starchy carbs it makes a massive difference and your muscles use them up. You can feel it go go in and out of your bloodstream when you eat it. Like it takes like between once you eat it, it takes something like 
15 to 30 minutes and you feel like the energy come in and then you feel it like drain out again. And it's, you're like, oh, shit, it's time to eat, time to eat. <laughs> I got to have a big meal now. It's, <laughs> it is uh, quite a feeling. And you see firsthand, you actually feel the muscles, you know, suck the blood sugar out of your blood. So very important. That's how you get the, the trend look without using trend. So next question is from Joel and he says D ball versus trend for muscle growth. Um, well, well D ball is very effective. So I would say that, that D ball can grow as much muscle as trend. Definitely. I mean, they're, they're like equal in the amount of muscle that they can grow, but here's where trend beats it again is that trend produces a better, a better cosmetic look. And then the other thing is that you can keep taking trend and not get sick. And if you're taking high dose D ball that compares to trend and its ability to grow muscle its anabolic effect, then you're going to have a time limit. That is uh, how long you can take that until you are going to be forced to stop because you're going to be like sick and it's, it's going to be like, you can't even train anymore. So, or eat, you know, you can't do bodybuilding because you're sick from what you're doing. Uh, at some point, you know, there's going to be a quicker, sooner tap out point with the D ball. And so then you're going to have to take a break. So then you won't be able to build as much muscle. Whereas on the trend, you can take high dosages for a long time and not get sick. You'll be uncomfortable. Your life will start getting fucked up, but you won't be sick. You'll still be able to eat. And if you get acid reflux indigestion, here's the trick. Here's the trick. You buy sodium bicarbonate tablets and take them, or you get the same thing at the grocery store in a powder and you throw it in your mouth and swish it around with some water and drink it. And that is baking soda. Baking soda is basic and it destroys the acid in your throat or in your stomach. So when you get acid reflux or heartburn from orals, from oral steroids or from clenbuterol, clenbuterol is very famous for causing this, then it's going to, it's going to make it stop right away. It's going to make it stop right away. And your stomach and your throat is going to feel better. Trend Malone can cause that too. All right, guys. I am going to call it a day on this one because I like this episode. I think this is going to be called the trend episode. Yeah. You know, it wasn't intentioned like that, but this was really targeted information on trend. So we're going to call it, we're going to call it a day. I'm going to get to the rest of the questions that would have been on this episode next time. But, uh, hope you enjoyed your time here today on the steroids podcast, the trend episode. If you would like your questions to be answered on the steroids podcast, go to steroidspodcast.com. And leave a comment with your questions or email or private message steroidspodcast at gmail.com or steroidspodcast on Instagram. Until next time.